Yeah, it's the mini truck stop that looks like this at night time. I got it with a camera with Olympus. Uh, a little up there, up here as you go. Uh, it's like like a mini shopping center with a store, and they do also technical examinations of the vehicles. They highly encourage me, Americans, to sit, again, Americans, desperate Americans, you must go up there. You must go up there and you got to take a picture of this stuff for me. Otherwise, we're not going to pay you and so on and so forth. Sickening. Uh, you must go up there. Really, they knew I'm going to be doing this stuff at night, most likely. Now, he would go up there in the middle of the night inside of this shopping center. They have a cameras. Uh, I'm doing this kind of documentary. This will be like a gift for the criminals, like for this freeloaders here, uh, who now are subject to the laws, uh, accountability for their uh, criminal acts. They all the time encourage to trespass, to do something stupid, anything. And this place, as you know, this place is highly, highly handled by police. However, we're gonna tell you exactly what I did. I did go all the way to the end of this street uh, where the truck stop is. And I've taken this photos of Colombia just as you have suggested uh, I shoot. So I did that, but I didn't do other stuff you uh, recommended me to do. Well, this is from up a little closer, exactly the same view, but in the daytime. Americans insisted for me to pose this here. You can see Vigula, Fugula, whatever you want to call it, Moss and so on. This business people were here. Americans created their own little, uh, not Americans also, all these people, politicians. They created their own little world here in this city of Novomis. I will also mention that one of the reasons that they wanted me to publish these pictures was like psychological MK Ultra manipulation on how I would pursue things as uh, they gestured like publish this kind of stuff so we can bring our women along with us uh, so we can give you some money and stuff like this so you can survive and things like that. It doesn't work like this here. Uh, I will not accept any bribes. I will not accept absolutely any money. This thing is going to go through the courts. I'm not a fake person. Imagine you went as far as not only blacklisting me from employment markets, but you, you have gone as far as mocking me as an insane, as a lunatic, gesture me to prove to be sane through MK Ultra everything that you guys have gone through so you have basically employed me through the lunacy through engagement in extreme acts of genocide through the field of psychiatry psychological and physical torture uh, no and all this shit for the sake of a neo-nazism fascism so you could you could promote one so you could progress your agenda Nobody ever have committed anything like this throughout the history of the humankind. If you understand the severity of your issue, uh, the severity of your problem, you are now exactly in the problem you have pushed me in. It's you now that are facing this kind of issues. And I don't think how any of you can possibly, uh, it's going to be an extremely difficult situation for you now. I don't give a shit if you even have to sell your houses uh, as long as you collect $200 billion and I'll be fine. Uh, anything below $200, uh, $200 billion, like I said, I don't even care if you lose your houses, your cars, your spouses, your families. I don't care if you end up hanging from Trent Towers or Twin Towers. I don't give a shit about it. My niece's husband the other day stated again something very sarcastically, sadistically to me. He said, like you, I could not afford myself. Well, the truth is, I could not either and I cannot either. You went on shopping, you went into something you couldn't afford yourself. Unless you did, this is going to be very difficult for you folks, unless you did it. There is a Scandinavian furniture store up here. Uh, there also is some kind of a 
I think maybe even, yeah, I think it's for the truck's maintenance service. And they do the technical examinations on the vehicles. There is a tool store here, uh, actually Mercator, now Agricor. And this is again when they did their paranoia, schizophrenia on how they're going to hijack me, abduct me. And now we just continue toward Kirka Pharmaceutical Company. That's pretty much, that will really, really now uh, totally complete this trip. Okay, there is, there is also something. I thought he honks me, but not. Uh, something in respect to you. A uh, little bridge and forest right almost in front of our house. Just maybe 250 meters away from our house. That's also they were doing also. All kinds of stupidities and shit. I just hope look that somebody video recorded these people. At least audio recorded them. And that I would get this kind of proof. Because that kind of stuff would, and I'm pretty damn sure we'll still they are fade beyond believable. Okay, uh, time to update the location a little bit. Well, you know, I think, I think, I think, I'm not sure if I am correct here or not. And I'm also not going to zoom, it's not going to make so much difference. I'm just going to write down here 17. This is like a bakery here. Uh, the area where it is then right here that you see that's a factory pharmaceutical company Okay, this here. This is you can hear the machines. I'm sure This is a bakery. This is what they produce bakery local bakery. It's pretty damn good The one that loved this place is Dr. Bornstein he would come here and it would be he would go, mm, how good it smells, how good it smells. And when these people would go home, that he was almost exact at the time. He would just come by here almost at the minute. I don't know how, I have no clue, but you can see it right there. People would come out and they would give him food, they would give him bread. You know, delicious, fresh bread. People are very given here, and so uh, I'm just gonna go around and I'm not gonna do this stuff. It's kind of weird in the middle of the night for me to do this stuff like this. This is the name of the company right there. It's like Z I T O, but Z is with like a little uh, something on the top. Like a check mark right on the top. We'll take one photo for you. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a little bit difficult, but to see uh, with Android. But people around here in, in southern part of Slovenia and the landscape, they're very famous for hospitality. People here will not let you go home. Uh, or whatever it is that you go thirsty, hungry, whatever. Uh, and they will take expense, uh, uh, expenses, you know, if they see that you are, you know, that in a situation or whatever, they, they, will, they will take care of you here well. Yeah, the stuff these people produce in this company is uh, quite outstanding. Uh, much better quality, let's say, donuts or something like this than Dunkin' Donuts. And they have a bread, they have all kinds of stuff. So, a good place to stop by. Uh, people here in the Lenska region, that's the southern part of Slovenia, are well known worldwide for their hospitality. It's not only whether you are, um, you know, in, in, in emergency situation. When you go for a visit, you go around... Uh, wine yards and stuff like this whatever is they go on a visit in a house people are very hospitable here they give you to eat they give you to drink uh, they take care of you very well it's just a culture here in southern part of Slovenia also in Bela Kraina Bela Kraina uh, they're very hospitable very kind nice people
good people really good and dr bornstein really appreciated that uh they would give him in the evenings uh they would make him happy was very pleased with it and they liked him a lot too uh from the bakery i continue toward house uh i pass kirka pharmaceutical company they have about five thousand people i think right here uh, there's nothing more to say in respect to Kirka Pharmaceutical. Uh, you were able to see yourself what exactly happened the other day when the security run at me. Uh, they, came, they came out to harass, basically. Intimidate. We're going to put the number 18 right here. And it's... When I continue, I go across the bridge and stop by here. It's called Graben. We're going to put here number 19. It's like a little stream right there. Uh, along this stream, castle is. It's an old abandoned castle. That's what I'm going to demonstrate to you. Uh, it's known as Evening Primrose. The most beautiful uh, flower so far that I have seen. Uh, it's the flower that opens at nights only. You're going to see exactly this here. Uh, this is, we have this thanks to Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, who had someone bring over this beautiful flower. I think most beautiful flower I have seen so far from Central America. All through, they also are in Northern America on the south, I think. Okay, so uh, some people like it also for forms of medications and stuff like that. But pretty much this is what I'm going to take you. Uh, just 50 meters from the house. However, I'm going to point you out another green gauge tree. Uh, this tree I already have explained about on a Facebook was regularly poisoned just as i was promised under mk ultra it would be it was modified to boost high pressure in me uh poisoned with the chemicals i would just eat it would be enough for me to eat four or five of this green gauge fruits within not even 50 meters my blood pressure would explode and that's exactly where you arrived inside of the house and then you have a feeling basically that you are attacked again with direct energy weapons not that i was not attacked with direct energy weapons of course i was attacked all along with direct energy weapons absolutely was um geiger counter was even stolen from me as you know for the android by my neighbor this is how far things went and my niece's husband have modified radiation detectors and everything and i actually i wouldn't even have the source to detect stuff that was used on me when it comes to direct energy attacks uh brutal stuff that also involved chemicals that boosted high blood pressure in me so it's nothing these people wouldn't do and have done uh, in the book of the criminality when it comes to high blood pressure issues chemical uh, food burning and stuff like this totally totally atrocious stuff Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Simply gorgeous. Simply gorgeous. okay uh i hope you forgive me for being carried away a little bit uh but this is so pretty to me 
uh, you know, when you see these drops and these beautiful flowers, it's just a unique experience to me. This is a part of the old castle. Uh, one of the properties, one of the housings on that, uh, next to that castle. And yeah, this, this stuff was brought. This is not native to Europe, not native here. Uh, it's the stuff that was brought. Benjamin Netanyahu had someone bring over this beautiful flower really as far as i'm concerned uh, i've not seen anything so beautiful they only open at night in the daytime they look exactly like you see right there like they already are they don't even exist basically like you can't even see them you go you go by and you don't even know what it is but if you go at night time you see this beautiful thing flashing like this just really really beautiful most beautiful flowers so far i've not seen any as pretty as this so that will be that. The next would be Green Gauge Poisoned Tree, which I would load myself at night. Uh, again, according to MK Ultra, this would be like stuff I should go for, uh, special reserved for me, even reserved for me, paid in for by Benjamin Netanyahu, I understand. Uh, and I'm not saying it was not, I'm not saying anything, I'm not saying he had a bad intentions in respect to this thing, exactly the opposite. But the people that were involved in MK Ultra from this village uh, didn't really love me too much. Uh, according to them, I would get whatever it was paid for, I would get. The only thing it would be, it would be poisoned. That's basically all. So let's go and see this green gauge tree only 50 meters away from our house. Oh, this is the green gauge tree. However, extremely poisoned. Uh, it's house just 50 meters. I already have posted video in respect to this issue. 50 meters from here. Uh, it was all paid in for, I understand, by Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, and according to MK Ultra scenario, I have heard people even talking about village people, Redek, who was involved in the uh, MK Ultra torture, along with my neighbor Dana Kolenz. Even heard him saying that he got paid money from Benjamin Netanyahu to leave me fruits here. Uh, and it's exactly what I would get, but at the same time, tree would be also poisoned because this is the stuff that was not in a deal. It was not covered in a deal. So I would get a little extra, uh, according to these people, that would boost high blood pressure issues. I am showing a corn here and I am showing corn deliberately. I'm showing corn because uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he would go and treat himself on this tree, green gauge tree. He loved this green gauge tree. He would go and he would hype on how somebody could always look behind you. Somebody can come from the corn and stuff like that. Those are his ideas. That's why that. Just a final uh, closing speech argument for this documentary. Uh, number one, there is no such thing as a Russophobia. I have never heard for such a thing. Uh, I have heard, I heard this, this garbage all the time. This term is being used everywhere. Uh, but when it comes to uh, Russophobia, uh, there absolutely, there definitely is no such thing in Ukraine. There cannot be any Russophobia in a country where Russians have murdered 15 million people, non-Russian people. So we are talking about Ukrainian people basically starving to death in 1930s. And who knows what else they have done in addition to that under the USSR. Stuff, not even, not even I think half of it came out, really, what went truly on. So we cannot talk about the Russophobia. Number two, George W. Bush family is a neo-Nazi fascist family. This is an old fascist neo-Nazi family 
that even financed out of Hitler during the World War II. They, they promoted, they gave financial support, they gave uh, the needed, whatever Adolf Hitler needed to burn Europe, they were at hand. They would supply oil, they would do the stuff for the Adolf Hitler. Uh, number three, uh, for this documentary and for what George W. Bush and other Americans have promised I would get paid, verbal agreement in respect to $200 billion. Uh, George W. Bush then further suggested that uh, I would create enormous demand and that I would not back down and uh, would be seen as a terrorist and stuff like this uh, when in fact this was a form of help. Well, uh, the terrorist is the one that murdered over 3,800 people, just about 3,800 people in 9-11 and it included police officers, law enforcement and firemen which died of cancer, asbestos. They died because of the cancer. It was a cancer that followed up on them. Total about 3,800 people. That's, a, that's what you call a terrorist, the one that plots bombs inside of the towers, the one that had Al-Qaeda crash, ISIS crash into a towers. That's a real terrorist. Um, Number four, maybe George Bush suggested that because I would demand so much money, that should actually go under the number three, uh, he would have Russians whack me, Serbs whack me, whatever, and rather would give them money and so on and so forth. Let's go back to the point number one about Russophobia. Um, I'm going to put it this way. Putin, Vladimir Putin, is a fascist. This is a Nazist. He does not deal with the Polish people. He does not deal with Ukrainian people other than giving them a bullet, killing people, engaging in a terrorism. But he does deal with the Bush family. He does deal with the fascists. Uh, he goes along with London royals. He goes along with the Germany, they're purchasing Russian oil. Um, so if we go, we, if we make a conclusion about all this, we are dealing here with a terrorism. Uh, we are dealing here with a Nazism, with a fascism. We are dealing here with extreme hatred. And this is the case. This is the case in which I explain uh, just how far uh, have this hateful people gone to get their hateful agenda going. Uh, I think I was pretty well clear. Uh, I also wonder why there is no such thing as Ukrainophobia, why there is no such thing as Polish phobia when Berlin murdered Poles and Ukrainians and so did Moscow and so on and so forth. What kind of world exactly do we live in? Okay, so these are the final words. Uh, I think I was uh, very detailed on how I see things as uh, who does it all, what Moscow, what Belgrade truly are. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I would add to all this the type of people. Elon Musk, Elon Musk, um, this yet another neo-Nazi from South Africa, Boer, it's a Boer, it's what Putin is going to take now to Russia, is going to import, I don't know, 15,000 or 30,000 of them, uh, pure white people, much, much whiter than Russians. Uh, and so it's going to have, it's, Russia is going to ha have something to be proud about. Uh, you see how beautiful Russia is going to be. Suggested on how the job, how the work 
a neo-Nazi work is going to be divided. Something is going to give. Uh, is going to be. Elon Musk is going to do. Is going to take on his back technology and stuff like this. Uh, another one is going to do something else. Royals are going to do whatever they do. I'm of course going to be doing my part. Uh, because because it's everybody that does something a little bit. Okay. So I just hope that uh, I'm going to grab this people by the throat, bring them over to the court and they get their judgment date. Because uh, the scum like this, the filth like this, uh, world have not seen yet. I am not happy about this. Uh, you can imagine. I don't think you would be either. Uh, this isn't about any human rights. Two days ago, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, definitely was a Benjamin Netanyahu, censored another one of my video sharing sites. Uh, FC2 Japanese is the only site that somewhat was not censored. Now it's down almost to nothing, to 50 views per video. Uh, exactly what he have done to the YouTube, exactly what he have done to Daily Motions, exactly what he have done to the YouTube, exactly what he have done to other uh, video sharing news sites, websites. Look, Benjamin Netanyahu gestured a very abusive form, a very abusive approach toward me that I should actually accept. He is crazy, irrational nonsense should appeal to me because he would do this to protect me. In other words, he would do this so my claim would be bigger, uh, I would earn more money. Uh, he would do this means that he would go and buy uh, video sharing sites would pay them a money, corrupt them, so they would keep my video view counters down, low, at nothing, at zero. Uh, no views uh, basically means few things. Number one is that you don't have any income. Especially hurtful when human rights are involved in that kind of stuff. That means that he gives the platform to the psychiatrists to engage in a physical and mental torture, which, as you know, in my case was very unpleasant. So he cuts the income, he creates the torture. Number three, he takes the credibility down from the person. And number four, he is discouraging. Basically, he is demoralizing a victim. So because today Israelis somehow have managed to stop the maniac again, from creating a bill that would grant him a total control over the internet in the state of the Israel. He wanted to block Facebook, uh, people from commenting, but also blogs like mine, news sites, websites like mine. So he wanted in Twitter and so on and stuff like this. When he couldn't block that thing, he turned around, he spin around when he saw the thing is not going to go through and have presented himself as someone who have actually stopped Bill from going forward. This is Benjamin Netanyahu. This is the stuff I'm talking about is real. Uh, number whatever you want to call that he suggested that I should not even post on a Japanese news sites because Japanese news sites are a neo-nazis they are neo-nazis and he doesn't want to pay to the neo-nazis this is how arrogant and malicious really Benjamin Netanyahu is and I'm glad this thing happens because now the Israeli people also know State of the Israel also know that individual is not only malicious against me, but also against Israeli people alone. I mean, is there anything else I want to add to this stuff? Yes, one more thing. Donald Trump, Putin, Netanyahu, Macron, Merkel, and few others, and royals and so on. You're talking about authoritarians. You're talking about the people that work like a group together against the people. Meaning that when one individual does a censorship, Putin already is working. Putin is trying to convince BRICS to impose the censorship 
in Russia uh, again, uh, block, basically create the internet only for uh, Russia. Our Russian people would not have access to the rest of the world. And he wants to pull in this shit also Brazil, all the countries that are in BRICS because Putin is a maniac, is a psychopath, as you know. He bids own Russian people in the middle of the day, in the middle of the capital, in a Moscow, uh, jails them, bids them up, bloody in front of the world. And thanks to the people like George Bush, thanks to the other authoritarians I have just spoken about, uh, he has a face to come in front of the TV on the news, smile and go on with his agenda, with his bloody agenda, with words, with the terrorism and so on. Meaning that Benjamin Netanyahu, with his latest step, the only thing he tried to do is, this is why this is so dangerous, he tried to give a backbone to, to Vladimir Putin. And then you have a two authoritarians like this that can give opportunity to the third authoritarian to go forward with his censorship. That might happen in Germany, in France, in the United States, and so on and so forth. Definitely, his contribution is not a contribution to the democracy. This is a dangerous corruption, uh, a threat, a threat to me, uh, to my new sites, and threat to democracy, threat to Israeli, to the Russian people, to everybody. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify these issues uh, in respect to all this stuff. So it's going to be uh, everything set, the record straight. I like to cover every little issue. Folks, I got really nothing else to say uh, in respect to all this stuff. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to you, play you one clip about an individual who also was subjected to the MK Ultra. And this individual, this poor guy, became a victim of MK Ultra. It was not like myself. Uh, he locked, he closed himself into himself and has spent five years inside of his home in a total fear to come out uh, because of the threats. Of course, there are threats, of course. Individual looks irrational, but who would not? He is locked already for five years inside. He fears for his life. He fears to come out of the house. Well, if I wouldn't be strong as I am, that could be me. Uh, that might become a next victim and so on and so forth if these people really don't get stuff. MK Ultra is extremely dangerous. Uh, you can possibly not imagine what one can do with the people. And this news about this individual came out just, I think, two days ago, like a perfect time. And let's go and play that news for you. Well, here is the news. Uh, Brian Harvey, um, manic video. Sure, uh, people are going to kill me. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, this shit that I have gone through, that it took me basically so many years, uh, the courage, determination, uh, which I have used to promote the truth, is unimaginable. It's almost impossible to describe what it takes to do the job like I did. If you watched my videos and then you will understand uh, the stuff I'm talking about. But you can see an individual here. Uh, he's not insane. There's nothing wrong with him, really. Uh, this is just, folks, uh, when you start, when you start talking about this stuff, when you go forward with the truth, you have no idea how difficult it is. You don't know where you would start and how you properly would explain to this. You fear you would be seen as an insane and stuff like that. But you're not. This is reality of today. One. My name is Brian RV, ex lead singer from E17. And uh, today, I really need to make a video because I've had enough of being victimized in there, right? Right, firstly, to the government, right? And to Ian Puddick, right? Don't think I don't know what you're up to, right? Everyone knows what you're doing to me, right? You're suppressing my information, right? You want to put me in prison so that I can get fans swinging, right? I've been a prisoner in my own home now, right, for about five years, four to five years, and it's because of Ian Puddick and Bill Maloney. And also, there's another man out there, right, who's doing the rounds looking like a hero, and his name's John Wedger. Now, John, you was the copper that picked me up and took me down to meet Bill Maloney the very first time, 
right? Let's not forget that. You took me down to meet Bill Maloney. You picked me up from my house, took me down to Parliament. I got out the back of your motor and I got into the back of another motor where I met Bill Maloney for the first time. Folks, uh, it is, it takes, uh, it, it my on my videos now lately, might look like a smooth deal, the stuff I did. But I'm telling you, it takes, it doesn't take a man, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be enough 10 men. Uh, you can see the people homeless. I think in 2011, in 2 million people, we already had in Slovenia about 7,000 homeless. Uh, millions of people ended up homeless on the streets. It takes a lot for somebody to bring forward the stuff I did. And most of the time, people do not manage to bring over uh, the truth, anything about really what is going on. You know, we live in a world with the issues that concerns us, should concern us more than anything else. And, uh, you know, we know actually very, very little about it. So I hope that my case did explain exactly the world we're in so this is brutal this stuff is brutal uh easily can turn you uh into an individual like this i did the hell of a good job here it's us people against real nazis against real fascists out there it's nowhere written that a victim of yesterday uh Russia lost 27 million people uh, in World War II. Serbia suffered enormously in the World War II, but it doesn't mean that the one who was oppressed yesterday could not become oppressor today, uh, oppressor of today and oppressor of tomorrow. Most likely at this point in time, at least what I was suggested at MK Ultra by many people, not by one single person, but many people uh, will eventually even uh, obtain at this point what would be a physical proofs, meaning tapes, videos, audio recordings about MK Ultra torture, and will hopefully place that online if I get a hold of it. So if you have that stuff, uh, go for it now. Uh, hand me that stuff somehow, uh, and uh, let's go on with it. Thanks for watching this video. Till next time. I am just going to leave another piece of advice and this is just going to be for Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, this is his daughter, Noah Netanyahu. His daughter was the first one that Benjamin Netanyahu introduced in my life. And as funny as it is, the girl actually liked me and I actually liked her. Um, according to Benjamin Netanyahu, the way he pushed his things forward, the two of us would get married, but that I was not enough, uh, I don't know, ambitious and so on and so forth. And uh, things did not come uh, to place according to Netanyahu. He gets into, he got into my face like, uh, like this. Then he substituted his own daughter with his niece. And the only thing I want to say to you, Netanyahu, is because I like... Sarah Netanyahu, I like your kids. Uh, you got a beautiful family. You got beautiful children. Um, you got beautiful brother, Ido Netanyahu. The only thing I want to say to you, Netanyahu, is one thing. Uh, let it be up to her to decide uh, what is it that she wants uh, in her life. Uh, and please, uh, stop treating me like this uh if um if you want to have me around you're gonna just have to treat me like you treat your own children this is the way it is and there is no third alternative second alternative or anything like this 
that's all I really wanted to say this is it for this video don't play with me